Time now to talk some Jets football with former NFL offensive lineman Brian Baldinger. He joins us on the phone, now works, of course, for NFL Network and also contributes to Jets.com, the website. Uh, Brian, thanks so much for joining us. You spent some time at Jets minicamp. Uh, tell us about some of the impressions that you have. Well, you can hear Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, <laughs> from just about anywhere on the field. Um, I think there's just a totally nothing against Todd Bowles and his staff and everything that he did in New York for four years, but there's just a, there's a pretty good energy just from the coaching staff and how the players responded out there. Of course, you can always, you know, you always can put the camera on Jamal Adams and you're always going to get something really good from Jamal. But I think, uh, you know, it's obviously Sam Darnold's team this year. It wasn't quite like that last year at this time. And so, you know, it's, uh, I think the, the greatest growth the player can make in this league is between his first and second year, and I expect Sam to make that kind of growth this year. Brian, you brought up two names that I wanted to make sure we got into this conversation. Greg Williams, the quote this week, I've coached a lot better people than you, 2-1 Jamal Adams. What were your thoughts on that? Is that a motivational deal? I mean, what kind of feathers were ruffled with that one? Well, you know, I mean, Greg Williams did coach Sean Taylor, and he'll tell you that, you know, Sean Taylor was the greatest athlete he ever coached. So if he wanted to give Jamal a history lesson, I think Jamal should listen because there was only one Sean Taylor in this league. Uh, for a while, he was the most dominant defensive back in this league. So, I think Jamal knows that, though. I mean, you know, he's, he's, the comparisons to Ronnie Lott have been out there, but that's not really fair at this point. I think Jamal, you know, knows that they've got to win a lot more games for him to get the type of recognition that maybe Greg Williams wants to put on and bestow upon him. So, I think Jamal is just fine with any of that. I think he's motivated every day to be the best regardless of uh, anything that somebody might try to do to motivate him more. I think he's just one of those self-motivated kids. Brian, you mentioned Sam Darnold. Why do you think that a player makes his biggest improvement between year one and year two? Well, I think the first year, uh, it's not a redshirt year, but the first year it's all new. And you haven't seen anything. You don't know anything. And then you, you go through the league the way Sam did. And you, you go through a starting phase. You get injured. You sit out. You come back. You kind of see things through a new eyes. You play a good month of December. And you go back and you watch it all in February and March. And then you got an Adam Gase comes in and a, and a new staff. You kind of see it again. And I think you, you, you kind of have some experience, but at the same time, you know what's coming. And you know the way the week uh, works. You, you had a year uh, where you got a good mentorship with, uh, you know, with a good player that was with them and rode to work with them every day. And uh, I think now he understands a lot about what's expected, about the preparation and how the league moves and how it changes week to week from a game plan standpoint to a, you know, from a division standpoint in the AFC East to other teams that you, you might not see again for the next three years. So I think all those things go into that leap that a player that I think wants to be good will make. So, Brian, Darnold has talked about his off-season regime and part of that being changing some of his mechanics so that he's a little bit more durable going into next season. Good idea, bad idea. Have you seen some of those changes? Well, I think, uh, I think Sam, you know, I mean, sometimes you just try to get rid of the football uh, the, the best you can. He has, <clears throat> I'm not going to say quirky because that's not the right word. Um, he's not always unbalanced when he throws a football. Now, he's got really good arm talent, and you can get away with that a lot. And he has at USC, and he did at times last year. But I think long-term, you always want to be in a position to throw the football. You always want to be in that position. And so I think those are some of the mechanics I think he worked on this all season. It's hard to see it in April or May or June. Uh, I think it will show up, though, once September starts rolling around and the pocket starts getting dirty, the pressure starts, you know, coming uh, clean towards him and how he delivers the football. I think that's when we'll kind of see it. When we slow it down a little bit under pressure, and we'll see if the footwork is really in the right spot. Ryan, Le'Veon Bell did not attend OTAs, but, of course, he was at the mandatory minicamp. Does it matter? I think it does. I think it does. I think if, if, the, if it's a new team and it's a new scheme 
and a coach wants to build the offense around you, I think it does matter. Now, maybe Levin is just a really quick study, and once uh, July 25th rolls around, uh, he'll have it all absorbed and won't miss a beat. But I think when you're around uh, a new way of doing things, he was in Pittsburgh for a long time, there was one way of doing things. There was one coach uh, that called the plays there. Uh, I think it does make a difference. And so I was disappointed that he wasn't there only because I'm old school and I believe that you'll never have more fun than the teammates that you're around every day. And I don't think there should be anything more important than that. Now, that being said, I'm not knocking Levin. He certainly has his, uh, his own regimen and how he gets prepared and how he gets ready. But I think he can benefit, and I think he would have benefited from being here all spring. Hmm. Interesting, Brian. All right, so on that offensive line, guys that got to create for both Le'Veon and protect Sam Darnold, you added all-pro lineman Kalichi Osimile, who said we've got some dogs on the inside talking about that offensive line. I know it's early, but do you see productivity? Do you see that line being strong this year? I don't. <laughs> I mean, I like Kalichi. I think he's a good signing. He's their best player. But, I, you know, I mean, I think winners is good, but I think they, they need help at center, and I think they need help at the tackles. And I think Joe Douglas is looking at that offensive line coming from Philadelphia, which had one of the three best offensive lines in football, you know, since he's been there. And I think that uh, there's a lot of work to be done, and I expect a lot of movement to be made. I wouldn't, uh, I, I don't care what anybody's name on the back of the jerseys are, I wouldn't get too comfortable until they can show that they can play at a higher level. And they got to play at a higher level across the board, Fletcher starts that, and I think he's the guy that can really set the tone on an offensive line, but I think there's a lot of upgrading that needs to be done. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out our right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.